Hi, my name is Kevin Sims, and I'm a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Train. Today, I'm going to be talking about room and zone assignments in the Assign Rooms to Systems section in Tray 700. In Tray 700, the Assign Rooms to Systems section of the program is used to configure the rooms and zones on the airside systems. Basically, you are specifying the air path. Airside systems can have system, zone, and room level coils and fans. For accurate simulations, correct zoning is essential because the level of fans and coils will affect how the rooms and zones should be configured. The learning objectives for this video will be for you to determine where the fan and coils are located in your trace system, how to properly assign zones and rooms to airside systems, and identify which reports you need to preview. I'll show you where to find some sizing information in the trace reports throughout the video. Before jumping into the assignments section, the first thing we need to figure out is what level our coils and fans are for our airside system. We need to navigate to the Create System section, Selections tab, Advanced button, Cooling Coil Location field. This will read either System, Zone, or Room. After knowing this, we can start assigning. As we mentioned, there are three levels of airside systems. We will start by covering the system level airside system. With assignments, there are basic concepts that govern how you zone your rooms and zones. These are based on the level of airside system. For system level airside systems, the system represents an air handler or an RTU. The zones underneath the system represent VAV boxes, and separate systems have separate plenums. Let's run through a couple of example scenarios so you can see what Trace is doing compared to the real world. In this example, we want one rooftop unit and every room to receive a VAV box. Now in Trace, this would look something like this. The first thing to recognize is that I have one system, so one RTU, I have one system, so I have one plenum, and I have six zones, so six VAV boxes. Now you may comment that I do not have six zones, I have six rooms, but in Trace, any room that is placed directly under a system is considered a zone. So in Trace 700, Having a room directly under the system is just like having a zone with one room under it. In this next example, we have two systems, still six rooms, but now I have two separate plenum spaces. All the rooms still get their own VAV boxes, but now the internal spaces share their own plenum, and the external spaces all share their own plenum. In Trace, this looks like this. Remember, the number of systems you have dictates the number of plenum spaces you have in your building. Now, besides having separate plenums due to different floors or new additions to the building, there are other reasons to have multiple systems. You want to create multiple systems, for instance, if one system had a DOA or an energy recovery device, and did not share these with other systems. You will find these additions in the Create Systems Options tab. I'll cover additional reasons for multiple systems in later slides. For our last system level airside system example, Let's imagine having one of the VAV boxes serving more than one space. In the picture, we show that both internal spaces will be tempered by the same VAV box. To have two or more rooms covered by one VAV box, the creation of a zone is required. Simply create the zone by hitting the New Zone button and then placing the two rooms underneath it, as you see here. Note the system that is selected is the system that will receive the new zone. Now, normally, you would be done, since you have assigned all your rooms. However, to model this example for energy analysis, you will also have to specify a thermostat location of zone for all the rooms served by the same terminal device. By setting the thermostat location to zone back in the Create Rooms section on the Rooms tab, the program, during energy calculations, is pulling all the rooms on this VAV box to come up with the operating mode for the terminal device only rooms that have zone will be pulled. If the room is in the zone but does not contribute to the thermostat reading, its thermostat location should be specified as none. After you've completed the rest of the model and you have finished calculating, you want to look at the system component selection report for all coil and fan sizing information. Note that we do not do coil selection in this program. We give you the tonnage and the entering and leaving temperatures, which allow you to size the coil however you want with regards to things like width, and number of fins. 
Lastly, you can refer to the zone checksums or room checksums if the room is a zone for VAV box sizing information and the system checksums for supply fan, preheat coil, and main cooling coil sizing information. Note that some of the peak numbers like air flows in your zone checksums will not add up to what is shown in the system checksum. This is because the system checksums is showing the peak at one given time, not just the added up values of all the zone peaks. That wraps up system level air side systems, so we'll proceed with zone level air side systems. Just like with system level air side systems, zone level air side systems also have basic concepts that govern how you zone your rooms and zones. For zone level air side systems, each zone represents a separate RTU, and separate systems means separate plenums. Just like the system section, we'll run through a couple of scenarios so you can see what Trace is doing compared to the real world. For all the zone level examples, I'll be using an RTU as my zone level air handling unit. For this first example, we're going to be mimicking a big box store, and we have created the rooms so that they represent the zones in the building, and we want every room to get its own RTU. To model this in Trace, you can set it up in two different ways. The two ways shown have identical outcomes. This is because a zone with only one room is the same as setting the room to be a zone. The key thing to remember is that any room placed directly under a system is considered a zone. One other key concept to grasp is system creation. If you have 100 rooms and each one has its own RTU, does this mean that you need to create 100 systems? No, because every zone under the zone level air side system gets its own RTU. So you would only need to create one system and place all the rooms underneath that system. For the second example, we're going to have one RTU serve two rooms. As you can see, you will need to put both spaces you wish to have conditioned by the same RTU under one zone. Also remember that since all of these zones are under the same system, they all share a plenum. In this last zone level airside system example, we want to have an RTU for every room. But we want to have two separate plenums, one for external spaces and one for internal spaces. To accomplish this, you must have two systems, because separate systems means separate plenums. Then, you can place the rooms under the system that has the plenum you want them to access. Now, just like with system level air side systems, there are other reasons besides plenums to have multiple systems. The most common for zone level air side systems is because the building has multiple sizes of equipment, like a 13 ton and a 25 ton RTU. In Trace 700, these 13-ton and 25-ton units would be created in the plant section as different plants. This means you also have to have two systems so you can assign their coils to the proper plant. Moving on, after you have completed the rest of the model and calculated, you'd want to look at the System Component Selection Report, or Zone Checksums Report, for coil and fan sizing information, not the room or system checksums. Notice that we do give you some coil sizing information, but it's up to you to select the coil you want. We give you the total tonnage and the delta T's required, but we do not know the width, height, and thin spacing information to make a selection for you. Lastly, we get to the room level air side systems. Room level air side systems also have their own basic concepts. All you need to know is every room on the system gets a unit, which has its own set of coils and fans and separate systems have separate plenums. Note that for room level air side systems, if you want two rooms to be covered by the same unit, you will need to create one room that takes both rooms into account. Just like with the zone and system level air side systems, we'll run through a couple of example scenarios so you can see what Trace is doing compared with the real world. For this first example, we will have every room have its own unit, and they will all be sharing the same plenum. For room level air side systems, the following trace setups result in the desired outcome, which is once again, all the rooms having their own unit, and all those units sharing the same plenum. You will notice though that the one on the far right will be a large waste of time. I want to revisit a previously mentioned key concept. We see people with many room models, for instance 100 rooms, and in real life, each room gets its own fan coil. Now, many users create a system for every single room. This is not normally correct, and will result in a waste of time and effort. 
If you want every room to have a fan coil unit, you only need to create one system and attach the rooms to it. This not only saves you time by not having to create an extra 99 systems, it also speeds up the calculation time. This leads us into another modeling tip that I want to bring to your attention. It has to do with inputting fan information. Pretend, for instance, you take the six room slash zone building model that we've been using throughout this presentation, and each of these rooms gets a PTAC unit, all the same size, which means you only have one system. To correctly model this on the fans tab, you should add up the fan powers. What I mean is, is if each PTAC has a quarter horsepower fan, and there are six fans, then the horsepower you would input would be one quarter times six, which is 1.5 horsepower. Now the static pressure is a little bit different, because if each fan sees 0.1 inch of static, then you would only enter 0.1 inches of static. Continuing on, the only other thing you can do with room level air side systems is split up the plenum areas, which is what we will do in this next example. Having separate plenums for room level air side systems is done the same way as other air side systems. Simply make another system. Now, in the previous slide, I mentioned that you can have one system and all the rooms under that system would receive their own PTAC. What happens though if you have two different types of PTAC units, which have different efficiencies? This is another great example where you need to create multiple systems. In the example above, if the internal systems had a PTAC that had a 9.8 EER and the external units had 11 EER, you would create two systems and apply each of their coils to separate plants representing the different EER units. To finish up, after calculations have been completed, you would want to look at the System Component Selection Report or Room Checksums for all coil and fan sizing information. Also note, some of the numbers in the zone checksums may not equal the straight addition of the same numbers in the room checksums. This is because the room checksums report is showing each room at its individual peak time, not a zone peak time. This video has covered why zoning is important and how to do it properly for all levels of airside systems. For more information on this topic, you can check out our Trace User's Manual, page 325, or in the program with F1 Help. If you liked this video and would like to see other topics covered, please email us and let us know. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.